Okay, so um, as a computational biologist, you know, you just need to know roughly all the sequences that are coming in and you have to deal with the data. So now we are gonna teach you how to look at the data. The raw data coming from the sequencing machine, thank God is not a big image of, or many, many layers of image. What they will give you is already a sequencing file. This uh, Illumina company has the software to do. Um, and so basically what we get is a FASTQ file. And for each sequence, you'll get four lines. Um, uh, the first line is the ID of the sequence. The second line is the actual sequence. The third line is, uh, you can see they, they have a different preface, right? If it's at sign versus a plus sign. At sign is the sequence name, and the plus sign means that uh, this is the quality of, the, the line for the quality of this sequence. Um, and, uh, and then you see some other nucleate, you know, like, oh, this, this doesn't look like a nucleotide. There's some other characters in here, you can see here. So every sequence has four lines two IDs and the actual sequence and also this quality score. Uh, the quality score follows the first generation uh, sequencing convention. They use ASCII code uh, to uh, decide the quality by 33 different characters. And this is basically, you know, the, the, on the ASCII, how, the, the small number is a bad quality, the, the higher number is good quality. And so basically, Based on this, you can see which location has better quality than others and, um, uh, and decide whether some reads are so bad that you don't want to use it. And the FRED quality, this ASCII number roughly represents um, the negative 10 log 10, the probability that this base pair is read incorrectly. You know, what's the likelihood that it is, is wrong? And so if this this whole number, you know, because we did a minus 10 log 10 of this probability, the bigger the number, the better the quality. And uh, so uh, why do we need to do quality control? Um, so because the sequencer output is just a read, and uh, if with the, fast, with the uh, quality score, you get this fast Q file, um, you want to kind of know whether my sequence data is okay. Um, what can you do if your quality, the data quality is not so good? Uh, yes, there's a question. Yes, it, it is the case that as, as you go, the sequence quality would be worse. Uh, I'm not sure this is a real one. We just kind of randomly generated something for you, for example. Yes. What's the real score for M or for V or X? Uh, is on the quality score part? Yeah. Oh, uh, basically, these are just characters. So, so you can imagine if the quality score is only 0 to 10, you can just use numbers to represent them, right? But if you have 33, then obviously you will need some characters as well. And in this case, they even added uh, the, the, the different characters. So basically, it, it's just this is just, um, in the actual encoding of these characters, this is a small number and this is a higher number. I think that A stands for 11. I think he's asking for the ASCII value. Yeah, so beneath them, each of them has an ASCII value. So we just, we just need some like, sheet of table. <laughs> Oh, good thing is you don't even need to do that. All of this is provided to you. Uh, oh, I'll show you later. Yes, another question. I just think what's the range of the, of the, uh, of the incorrect probability? Like if worst quality goes to like 99% wrong, and best quality goes like minimize 33 or something? Yeah, yeah, some, something like that. Okay. Right, right, something like that. Yeah, another does question? Like, does that mean like the best quality would be like a lowercase zero, case zero? Yeah, it will be a lot of on the other side. But really, 10 to the minus 33, it's like a ridiculously small number. And so you can see most of the time, even if you are here, it's pretty good already. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, what can I do if the sequence quality is not so good? You have to decide whether this is just one read or, or even a single nucleotide. So you can imagine, as, as we mentioned, when you sequence, what people see is that 
usually the very first couple, a few, uh, maybe three, four nucleotides, they are not so good. Uh, because kind of machine is getting in the groove to start sequencing. So initially there might not be as good data and you can just trim them out from the beginning. And then after that, it's usually very good quality data and then it just trim, like go off over time. But occasionally maybe uh, some base pair might be bad. Just one base is bad. Those are actually okay. You, the, if the all, overall the read is, is good, you can still use it. But you know, like if it's just one nucleotide is okay. If the whole flow cell, all the other reads are okay, but just one read is bad, sometimes it's because two molecules were too close to each other. And when they are amplified, every time these spots are giving out two different colors, and you're not sure what's going on with these two, right? So that you can just ignore that spot. That's also okay. Um, if you have just one sample that's bad, uh, this, because, Right now with Illumina, in each lane of sequencing, you can already put many, many samples in there. If only this sample is bad and all the other samples in that lane is good, it just means the person who has done the experiment preparing the sample for sequencing needs to go prepare their samples again. They didn't prepare it correctly or something, right? For example, there are some experiments you want to sequence something, but you don't have enough starting material you're trying to scrape off like DNA or RNA from one cell or something that you couldn't amplify. And then you put it on the sequencing, that sample doesn't give you a good result. That's the sample preparation step. Um, if the whole run is bad, meaning that all the samples, all the lanes are giving you bad quality data, it means that the sequencing facility should resequence it for you for free, right? So that, that's why you kind of need to know this. Um, the difficulty here is the FASTQ files are really massive, right? So there needs to be an automated way to do uh, quality control. And for that, there is FASTQC or uh, FASTQ or quality control. And this is kind of interesting. This code has been used by almost every one of us who do sequencing analysis, except that this has never been published as a paper. It's just a kind of a cool tool that we all use. So bioinformaticians created a good resource for the community without even a paper. And so FASTQC has different levels of quality control. For example, if you look at your sample that might have 5 million or 50 million reads, and you look at the quality of the reads from the first base to the second base and, and so on, um, you might notice that uh, in the first nucleotide, the quality is pretty good. You can see here it could be uh, 38 or 32. So, I would say usually about 30, these are pretty good quality reads. They all can, can be used. Um, uh, so here they are cutting actually by 28 and even above 20 is pretty good. And so if, uh, and then you can see the quality will decrease. This is the average of all the reads at this location, right? This is the, and so as you go further into the reads, you can see the quality start to decrease and this kind of decrease at around 50 base pair. Uh, but I think for this one, even if they were to sequence for another maybe 20 bases, it will probably be okay, right? Because these are all still good quality data. Whereas the bad quality data, even at the nucleotide 20, things are falling down and you know, like at 25, you are not getting really good results. And so sometimes even if you can read a 250 base pair, after the QC, you might want to only look at the first 200 or maybe first 150, right? So this is a good way to look at this. Um, so you, the, the good quality is you know, consistent and also high quality along the read. And this, uh, sorry, there's a question. Um, how does the uh, so uh, the question is, how does Illumina calculate this from imaging? As I mentioned, for example, if the spot is very, very big and it's very, very clear, there's only one color, there's no different color overlapping with each other, they, they calculate this. Uh, I actually don't know the detailed algorithm, how they did it. They, they probably tried a lot of different tests to calibrate their read quality. But this basically now, when you run the machine, by the time you get the data, it's already calculated. Okay, other questions? Um, uh, another good uh, readout is if you look at uh, the, 
So the FastQC has a different pages of output. Another output is, is actually similar to this. It's derived from this figure. Um, you are looking at the, for each sequence, you can look at, because each sequence is very long, they have many, many nucleotide. Every nucleotide has a quality score. What is the median quality score along the read? Right, so because if the most of the uh, read has quality of 38 or 39, you will probably get a median score close to like, yeah, 30 something. So I would say anything with a median score about 30 or 20, even 28 is a very good quality result. Um, but then sometimes you might see this, a whole bunch of reads for some reason, their median quality score is only around 16 or something. Well, it's just lower. It will give you some sense, you know, maybe this is not a good quality sample. Um, another interesting thing is to look at the nucleotide content on each location. Uh, as we mentioned, as this has been noticed by people. Um, sometimes I'm, I'm actually showing an extreme case. This situation usually doesn't happen for that long. Occasionally you might see the sequencing machine in the first couple cycles, you might have very uh, unbalanced GC or, or the ACGT balance. It was kind of a bit crazy. Then it's, it's okay. When you see this, um, it's actually a pretty good quality run. The most ideal case is actually, it's all four lines together. It means you have loaded the dyes completely even, right? They, they are exactly the same. But even if they are a little bit off like this, as long as they're fairly parallel, this is pretty good. Um, sometimes when you see something like this, you can decide to trim off, in this case, probably the first 15 base pair. You say, oh, somehow the sequencing machine here is kind of a bit crazy. Let's just remove the first 15 base pair and only the map the remaining one. But sometimes when you have a sample like this, it would mean that in one cycle, all the reads you see is an A. In another cycle, all the reads you see is a G, and so on there is something wrong with this run completely. I wouldn't, we would probably need to rerun this, uh, this whole run. Okay, maybe they just didn't add the things correctly in the different cycles. Uh, this is not very common. Uh, and finally is to look at the sequence uh, GC content. Uh, we believe this should roughly follow a kind of a normal distribution. And if you look at all the reads, what is there, you know, on each read, because it's like a, 100 base pair long or so, what is the GC percentage? Um, it should be pretty, you know, close to, in fact, because human genome, you know, a lot of genomes are GC, less GC rich. So you get maybe 45, that's pretty good. But if you have something like this, um, you might, you might want to check the quality a little bit. Um, so I would say most of the time, we just get this. The average quality, if you get something like 30, that's good enough. Okay, um, so questions about uh, our uh, FASTQC?